Fake news, fake news. If I don't like it, it's all fake news. That seems to be how it works nowadays. Nobody cared about the term fake news or the so-called fake news phenomenon until just after the US presidential election. It's comical, almost to the day of the results. This is when the mainstream media and political establishment began spinning the narrative that it was fake news purveyors who had been responsible for spreading lies and fabrications. That it was so-called fake news outlets who had driven the US electorate to vote based on false information and elect Trump. It couldn't possibly have been the alternative independent media spearheaded by actual investigative research, WikiLeaks revelations, fact-checked analysis, and journalists with a modicum of integrity that they had unearthed the truth about the Hillary Clinton campaign and debunked the lies being spread by the mainstream. The fake news narrative has got to be the biggest, most hysterical, tantrum-throwing fit by sore losers the world has ever witnessed. And the contrived bullshit that Russia hacked the election, that narrative also emerged at the same time as the fake news one. So which is it? Is it a Russian hack? Or was it right-wing and conservative press spreading lies? Make up your mind. The reality is the American public and the Western world in general are fed up of the globalist agenda. They're tired of left-leaning bias in their media, of being morally policed by the regressives, and they're no longer interested in identity politics and political correctness. They have legitimate concerns about the future of their country, about free speech, economic sovereignty, culture, immigration, and of course, they didn't like Hillary Clinton's political record. Trump was an anti-establishment candidate who offered change, and the prospect of a Clinton presidency didn't. At best, she represented the mediocrity of the status quo, and at worst, international conflict with Russia, EU levels of mass unfiltered immigration from third world nations, increased risks of ISIS terrorism, zero economic growth, more racial tensions and division, and Canada levels of feminism. Also, Americans probably thought that if she couldn't be trusted with sensitive classified US documents, she probably couldn't be trusted in the Oval Office. CNN were 100% behind Hillary, with wall-to-wall -wall positive coverage of her and negative coverage of Trump. No surprise given their financial support of her campaign through parent company Time Warner. You want to talk about fake news? Let's talk about CNN rigging their polls to oversample Democrats and give the impression Hillary was ahead. Well, we saw how that ended up. The far left is losing power and it needs to delegitimize the nationalist and conservative backlash it's now facing by discrediting the arguments of their political opponents. They don't do this with debate. They do it by simply labeling anything that runs counter to their narratives as fake news. Done. Next. That's easy. Bye. And better yet, get big social networks and left-leaning fact-checkers like Snopes, now working with Facebook and Google, to blacklist websites with differing political views and bury their content and stories in their algorithms. CNN are running with the fake news narrative pretty hard, and normally I wouldn't care that they're pumping out outright fabrications like this. The trouble is, if you're labeled fake news, you're basically being censored for thought crime now. That's it. It's a witch hunt and you're guilty until proven innocent. The burden of proof is on the defendant and not the claimant. The only way to decide what's fake for real is to allow all sides to speak openly and let the people explore the arguments. But the truth, it seems, is now going to be decided for you. It's disturbing how so many people I see on Twitter who buy into the fake news narratives. And it's largely driven by a dislike of Donald Trump, let's be honest about it. These people are sheep. They're falling into line exactly as their puppet masters want them to. Now, of course, I'm sure there's plenty of Hillary Clinton supporters who are watching this who also don't buy the fake news narrative. And they had their own legitimate concerns about Donald Trump, and that's fine. But if you only consume mainstream media, eventually the lies told often enough, the constant exposure to bullshit, they begin to seep into your brain and lodge there as fact, it seems. Surprise, surprise, if you only expose your mind to one way of thinking, you'll only ever think one way. Which is why, as I've said before, it's important that your diet of news consists of numerous sources from a variety of political persuasions in order to have something resembling an impartial position. This is not what we have in our democracies right now. We have a very divisive and corrosive public political discourse and one that's forcing people into echo chambers. They can't see any common ground, it seems. The fake news thing came out of nowhere. And because, let's face it, most people are too busy commuting, going to work, working nine to five, taking care of their families, living their lives, they don't explore political issues full time. 
comprehensively. So they snack on news media like it's fast food. CNN and others are effectively political convenience food. Fire up the app and get the headlines. Even if they're somewhat skeptical about what they're reading, hell, there's got to be some truth to it, right? They've run stories about how Trump is going to be too distracted to be president because he's also going to be doing The Apprentice. Unbelievable. Another fake news story that's been refuted. Does this story get buried by Facebook now because it's fake news? No. CNN can say whatever it wants, it seems, with impunity. They've also used video game footage from Fallout 4 in a story concerning Russian hacking. What bizarro world are we living in here? The latest big fake news story, of course, which again is immediately believed by hardline Trump critics on no evidence, again, looking for confirmation bias, is the golden showergate story from BuzzFeed. So BuzzFeed throws out this story on no evidence, which they have to admit is unverified. They use the term several times, unverified but explosive allegations of Russian collusion and acts of sexual indecency. They have to cover themselves by saying this information was circulated for weeks, which is to hide the fact that it was just made up recently. Read the BuzzFeed article and the dossier, and it says in the article that BuzzFeed can't confirm the allegations are true. But of course, they'll report on them anyway, right? They'll report on the allegations anyway, despite the fact that they can't confirm or deny them. But BuzzFeed wants the American people to decide for themselves if it's true. <laughs> this is not journalism. I'm sorry. This is not journalism. This is not justice. This is a witch hunt. Americans who hate Trump have already decided for themselves what kind of a character he is in their minds. BuzzFeed knows this. They believe Trump is literally Hitler and a misogynist and Islamophobic and a racist, etc., etc. So any more fresh allegations get believed on no evidence. This is the kangaroo court of biased public opinion. Where's the due process? This is them communicating to a partisan audience of Trump critics and attempting to agitate them into political activism against Trump on no confirmed evidence. In fact, news just in while I'm editing this video, this story has just been discredited as being nothing more than a 4chan prank. But the amount of people, the amount of Trump critics who jumped on this believing it with no evidence immediately is ridiculous. And the amount of other news outlets who believe this? Incredible. If this doesn't discredit the fake news narrative right here and right now, I don't know what will. Shouldn't it be obvious to you who's behind the fake news narrative? Well, one of them, of course, is the woman who graciously accepted defeat in the election. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year, it's now clear that so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This isn't about politics or partisanship. Lives are at risk. Lives of ordinary people just trying to go about their days to do their jobs, contribute to their communities. It's a danger that must be addressed and addressed quickly. Bipartisan legislation is making its way through Congress to boost the government's response to foreign propaganda and Silicon Valley is starting to grapple with the challenge and threat of fake news. Of course, she was happy to support Jill Stein's failed recount scheme. Then, of course, there was all that crap about trying to bully and intimidate the Electoral College into changing their votes to Hillary. The fake news thing conveniently drops out of the sky weeks ago at coincidentally the same time as the Russian hacking scandal emerged and suddenly the term fake news, which was never on anyone's mind before, and was never a phrase people were using, is now occupying people's thoughts on a daily basis when it comes to politics and news media. This is the agenda-setting function of the mass media. This is spin-doctoring and mass hysteria created by political agitators and think tanks. And I think Eric Weinstein's interview with Dave Rubin recently sums this up very well. What conspiracy theorists do that gives them a bad name is that they fill in the details. We don't know what caused this inauthentic Thing. We don't know if it was a decision inside of the deep state, if it was uh, the newspapers getting together with the parties and saying we have a credibility crisis, but there was some decision somewhere that mushroomed out as if suddenly fake news had always been the issue. Suddenly everyone's talking about right. the exact same thing. And it's we not don't the... know what, or we right. don't know where it came from. But you think it had to have coordinatedly come from something? I don't believe that it had an authentic source. 
I believe that it could mushroom and then people started reacting to it. But I do believe that it was an inauthentic, um, sudden an anomaly. And so I know that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the nature of the problem is, just the way I know that fake news came out too quickly, too unified. And, you know, John Stewart used to do this. I remember a particular uh, moment where he went and took video from each of the Sunday morning talk shows. And there were like 10 Republicans, and each of them used the phrase, I think he's running away from the top of the ticket. He seems to be running away from the top of the ticket. He, he might be running away from the top of the ticket. Yeah. And when you hear the same weird phrase yeah. 10 times out of 10 mouths, you don't need to know exactly that there was a talking points memo, that it came out from this email address, was broadcast to these people, and that they fanned out and then used perseveration by just repeating and repeating to make something as if true. Mm -hmm. But it's enough to know something is artificial. So I think it's really important that we all get very good at saying, I can tell that this is artificial and I don't know what caused it. It saddens me to look upon the state of mainstream media and see what passes for journalism now. It's depressing, but hardly surprising. When you commercialize news reporting to such an extent that it's no longer a loss leader as it once was before media deregulation, vested interests and corporate collusion are inevitable. Journalists don't want to lose their jobs by pissing off their bosses, their sponsors or partners. They have to internalize the value system of the institution they work in. So if you're told to bury a story and not run something important or to adopt a bias in the story, uh, you know, they have no choice. If they want to keep working for company X, they'd better conform to the political leanings of that company or find work elsewhere. The beginning of self-censorship lies by omission and biased reporting. Last time I checked, censorship was not the path to the truth. Political and ideologically motivated agendas are not the path to balanced and honest news reporting. They are, however, the path to the real fake news.